Get an update on the day's top business news for you now. Kate Moody is here with us in the studio. Hi there, Kate. Hi, Laura. And we're going to start with another blow to the British economy. Uh, the car maker Honda reportedly preparing to shut down a factory in Swindon. That's right. We're expecting to hear from Honda on Tuesday morning. An MP from Swindon, though, uh, has confirmed these reports on Twitter. Justin Tomlinson says the Japanese car maker is consulting with the government and will do everything possible to minimize job losses in the coming years. Interestingly, he said that decision was not directly linked to Brexit. That is unlikely, though, to reassure the 3,500 people who work at that plant and who are already worried about their future. Take a listen. We haven't really heard anything, um, but obviously, as you can imagine, the reaction is terrible. Yeah, doom and gloom. Um, lots of families, lots of people with children, like ourselves. So, yeah, gutted, really. Yeah, absolutely gutted. Obviously, I've got two kids, I've got a missus. Obviously, this is my full-time job. This is this is my life. This is my lifeline. So, obviously, about this, I'm, I'm now... Uh, well, technically, I'm jobless. So I now have, it said on the news, we've got till 2022, so I suppose I've got three years to find myself a new job. Now, Britain's auto industry as a whole has issued stark warnings about Brexit, saying that the uncertainty about the EU, UK's pending exit from the EU uh, has seen investment drop by over half over the last year and that a no-deal Brexit would be catastrophic. The sector is worth around 93 billion euros every year, Car makers account for 13% of overall exports from the UK, employing more than 850,000 workers. And manufacturers rely heavily on their neighbours. 1,100 trucks arrive from the EU each day, carrying components for final assembly. More than half of UK-made cars are then shipped back to Europe for sale. Meanwhile, the European Union says it's ready to react if Washington imposes tariffs on its cars. A report by the U.S. Commerce Department has raised that possibility by suggesting that Donald Trump could label such imports a threat to national security. The U.S. and EU have had an uneasy trade truce since last July, when Trump and Jean-Claude Juncker agreed to hold off on new tariffs. But Brussels says it remains ready to respond with its own measures if the Trump administration shifts gear. The European Union will stick to its word as long as the U.S. does the same. Where this report translates into actions detrimental to European exports, the European Commission would react in a swift and adequate manner. Let's check in on the day's trading action now. Fairly muted session for the major European indices. Kekant managing a positive close here in Paris. Investors are still hoping that the U.S. and China will reach a deal in their ongoing trade spat before that March 1st deadline. Wall Street is closed this Monday for the President's Day holiday. Cybersecurity officials in the UK have concluded that they can handle the risk posed by using Huawei equipment. The Chinese tech giant has been a lightning rod for international controversy, with the US leading a campaign to block it from being used in the development of 5G networks. The British decision could now tip the scales in Europe, where governments are evaluating the possible risks. Claire Rush explains. Huawei, a manageable risk. The UK's National Cyber Security Centre, or NCSC, believes it is possible to manage the security risks of using Huawei equipment in future high-speed 5G networks. The Financial Times first reported the findings on Sunday, prompting response from the NCSC. A spokesperson said it is committed to the security of UK networks and it has a unique oversight and understanding of Huawei engineering and cybersecurity. The British findings put London at odds with Washington, which has been spearheading an anti-Huawei campaign amongst its allies. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence underlined the message during his European tour last weekend. Chinese law requires them to provide Beijing's vast security apparatus with access to any data that touches their network or equipment. Both Huawei and the Chinese government have repeatedly denied the allegations. It is using political means to intervene in economic activities. It is hypocritical, immoral and unfair bullying behavior. Huawei, the leading manufacturer of 5G equipment, has said it would reject any government demand to disclose foreign customers' confidential data. But security concerns have already led Australia and New Zealand to block telecoms providers from using its equipment in 5G networks. Europe is now the next battleground with analysts wondering if the UK stance will fracture that of EU countries and looking to Germany to see which side it chooses.
Moving on to some of the day's other business headlines now. Huawei is providing technology for what's described as the world's first railway station to be connected to 5G. The hub in Shanghai is set to go active later this year, providing a connection for augmented and virtual reality, as well as retail management. The British Parliamentary Committee has issued a scathing report calling for tougher rules to prevent Facebook from violating data privacy and competition laws. It comes after an 18-month-long investigation into fake news and disinformation on social media. And hundreds of passengers across Europe have been stranded by the abrupt collapse of British regional airline Fly BMI. The low-cost carrier says higher fuel costs and uncertainty around Brexit made it impossible to continue doing business. It has cancelled all scheduled flights. The decision to delay Saturday's presidential election in Nigeria by one week could cost the economy billions of dollars. Many businesses were closed on Friday to allow workers to travel to voting centers for the Saturday poll. Airports and land borders were also closed. Street vendors found themselves with stocks of perishable goods that will now go to waste. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry estimates the losses already have hit one and a half billion U.S. dollars, not to mention the impact on morale and investor confidence. Between now and the new schedule dates, the tempo of economic activities will go down significantly because there's already a confidence issue. And once you have a confidence crisis, it affects the economy. Other economists are also estimating that that cost, final cost could be even higher uh, and a lot of questions, of course, about the turnout for next week. Absolutely. All right, Kate, thank you very much indeed. Kate Moody there with the business. We're going to